people remember the game Super Mario Galaxy. He used to play as Mario just wandering around these tiny planets and he used to be able to jump between them. Now, I don't know if this is just me and my space obsessed brain, but I always used to wonder whether it was possible to first of all get planets this small and if you could ever physically jump off of one. Now I think it's about time we answered those questions. A couple of weeks ago, um, a subscriber asked me a question in the comments mm. that intrigued me. Okay. And also sent me down a little bit of a rabbit hole. <laughs> that was, um, how small is the smallest planet that like we could actually live on? Mm. Now, I did not know at the time really what the answer to that question was. I didn't even know if that question had an answer. Yeah, yeah. I'm not but, sure it no, I don't think it does either. But anyway, you will notice there's someone else next to me. <laughs> um, so this is uh, Professor David Pipping. Hey, okay? hey guys. But you will know him as David from Cool Worlds, and you are an exoplanets expert. That's right. Yeah, I work on looking for planets outside the solar system, mm -hmm. uh, moons as well. That's kind of the thing my team's particularly well known for. And we think a lot about planets, and uh, I think we can work out the answer to this question together today. Good, because I'm not a planets person, I'm a galaxies and black hole person. It's okay. So occasionally, <laughs> occasionally I'm like, ooh, planets, for like something fun to do. Like when the Nobel Prize was announced, I was just like, ooh, planets, yeah. getting about planets around. A good excuse to talk about planets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, so the, the thing that I then got to thinking was, do you remember the game Super Mario Galaxy? On the way well, over the U.S. Well, somewhat, I so, remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, this defined my childhood. So, okay. um, I remember this game as Mario running around these tiny planets and jumping between planets. And so, my first thought when I got asked, like, what's the smallest planet, was, could we ever have something like that? Yeah. I mean, I, I think you can have worlds, depending on whether you mean by planet, mm -hmm. as small as you like. When you use the word planet, this is where people get upset, and some people have very strong opinions about what a planet is and is yeah, not. Okay. So there's so a I, whole yeah. thing there. So I guess we should, we should probably start with like what the definition of a planet is, right? Because there's yeah. actually not a lot of objects in space that have a clear-cut definition. Well, there's actually only eight. I mean, even the exoplanets that we discover mm -hmm. technically actually aren't classified as planets, bizarrely, by the International really? Astronomical Union. I didn't Union. know that. What are they classified as? Exoplanets, then? Or just I mean, they really, don't, they really don't have an official designation. So here it is. The IAU, the International Astronomical Union, voted, um, I think it was in 2006, mm. it's kind of an infamous event now, where they demoted Pluto, and it was no longer a planet, it became this dwarf planet thing. So then you just have eight planets. And the criteria were that it has to, one, orbit the sun, mm -hmm. So that just immediately kicks out yeah. all of the exoplanets. Okay, yeah. so they didn't go with like orbits a star, they just yeah, went yeah. with sun. But okay. this was fairly early in the hunt for exoplanets, so maybe they just weren't thinking about that, I don't know. It yeah. was, uh... I mean, it's still like 11 years after the first one was found, right? But I yeah. guess it was pre-Kepler, right? So Kepler was the one that discovered like, That's like right. 4,000 odd planets. Yeah, Kepler was like so... 2009, so maybe you can kind of excuse that. We definitely need to revise it though, because that, that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Not just, just have the sun thing in there. Can you hear us, I, you? Revise your rule. <laughs> Please do. Um, and and the second one was that it has to be basically round. So technically we call that hydrostatic equilibrium. So it has enough self-gravity that it's getting itself into a, a more or less a round shape rather than like a potato-shaped asteroid sort of thing. Right, yeah. And then the, the third one was that it has to be, um, I'm just going to try, it has to clear its orbit. And that was the one that Pluto fell over on. Yeah, I remember this, because Pluto's orbit is just full of crap, right? Yeah. So I think they call them like Plutoids or Plutinos, but there's... there is. Plutinos! A... <laughs> Plutinos! I've never heard Plutinos before. That they sounds have... like a band. <laughs> if I ever start yeah. a band, we're going to be called the Plutinos. Turns out that if you, if you moved Pluto... Alright, just picked it up and just... Yeah, put it somewhere else. In fact, let's swap Pluto. So pause the simulation in The Sims. Yeah. <laughs> We're yeah. going to put Pluto on the grid. Let's play God. God mode <laughs> in astronomy. Okay. God mode. Which is, yeah, this is basically what astronomers like to do, right? Let's play God mode. Let's pick up uh, Mercury and Pluto and swap them over. All right. In the solar system. And Mercury is bigger than Pluto, right? It's it is. A it's, um, it's a few times more massive, I think. I think it's about 10 times more massive, maybe. Yeah. But it's, of course, much closer to the sun. Mm -hmm. It orbits the sun about 40% of the Earth's same major axis, something like yeah, this. Yeah, I think it's like 18 days or something it takes yeah. to orbit. Yeah, yeah it's the and closest in planet. It's um, it's so close to the sun that you even get kind of general relativistic effects kicking into its mm -hmm. orbit and things like this. I did a video on that, my subscribers will yeah. they'll be up on that. <laughs> yeah, um, so it's a, it's a fun world. And if we put Pluto where Mercury lives, then we would actually call that a planet, bizarrely. Because 
it's so close to its star now that the, the track, the orbit that it goes round on is, of course, much, much tighter. It's a much smaller circle that it's tracing around. It's actually 400 times smaller in circumference than Pluto's. And so it would uh, easily be able to clear that very small track. It yeah. doesn't need much gravity to be able to clear that yeah, track. Yeah, because there's so much less stuff to attract to it to clear yeah. it exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So then, so then so bizarrely... Number three, it's already like done. So it's not really... Oh, okay. So this is a, this is a, this is why the the definition gets murky and why some people don't like it because mm. hey pl move Pluto around and suddenly it becomes a planet in fact move Earth further out and suddenly Earth would not become really do a we planet. know like the distance that Earth would have to get to not become a planet like is it Pluto distance or is it like Saturn distance no it would have to be really really far out it would have to be sort of like Planet Nine esque distance mm. if you believe so, like I I am convinced <laughs> Planet Nine is a black hole I was like I jumped on that paper that came out the was, I was like the solar fine. system has a pet Black hole, I'm there. Yeah, I mean, um, I need a black hole for my halo drive, so I was, <laughs> I was very happy to see the, the, the possibility of a black hole in the solar system. I guess if we thought about what is the smallest planet that would actually be defined like as a planet, mm. it's very different to asking like, what's the smallest body that we could literally walk around on. Yeah. Yeah. Walking, walking around is difficult. I mean, the astronauts, um, the Apollo astronauts walked, walked on the surface of the moon. But if you watch those videos, they're kind of hilarious because yeah. they're falling over all the time. It's really, it's actually really difficult to walk on an object when the gravity is really low. You just can't really get purchase. You know, like you're just you're just tripping over yourself, and every time you try and put pressure down on the ground, just the act of pushing down on the ground lifts you off the surface, and so you end up tripping over yourself. Yeah. So on the moon, it's um, that's sixteen percent, so one sixth mm. the Earth's surface gravity. And that's thought to be about the limit as to when you can really handle walking. You go any less than that, and you're just going to be tumbling over yourself all the time. Yeah, so maybe you could learn. Maybe you could, like, crawl. I don't know. But maybe be some... Would crawling be better? Yeah. If walking. it was very low gravity, I think using... Uh, getting four points of mm, contact yeah. would be better than, yeah. than, uh, than trying to, like, walk as we usually do. I think that force of pushing down would, would fly you off. I'm just imagining, like... <laughs> astronaut interview like scenario now where they're like show as you crawl how you crawl <laughs> so one actually interesting question is is what would it take to just fly off oh, to okay. actually end up mm -hmm. in orbit or just complete escape from the object yeah. how could you push off the surface of this body um how small would it have to be so that a human could just leap off right yeah so, like so, Super so, Mario yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like so the earth's escape velocity is what like 11 is it 11 meters per second or kilometers per second? I think it's 11 kilometers per second, yeah. That much more yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can throw a ball at 11 meters per second. Imagine tennis serves. Yeah, that's a good point, so. Yeah, so 11 kilometers per second, right? That's the speed you would need to launch something out to escape the Earth's velocity. But if that was like, yeah, like 11 meters per second, then yeah. you, could pro you could probably at least throw something or jump or... Yeah. off the actual surface of a planet completely. That would that's be right, cool. that's right. I mean, let's just... There's this whole issue of how you would get into that position to like poise yourself into that into that jumping position without actually floating off during the process but assuming yeah. assuming you can get into a into a jumping position then a human can jump about I don't know, a meter on the earth maybe yeah, i don't know can we jump a meter should we, should we should try? <laughs> <laughs> watch my phone follow <laughs> ready okay one two three You can definitely jump higher than well, I can. Well, <laughs> I think I just took my legs in more. I don't know that <laughs> my body actually You're just like a real, you're just We'll do a slow-mo. We'll, we'll, we'll slow-mo. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm so competitive. When I edit this and I see you get higher, I'll be like, damn it. Damn it. Yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> assuming that we can jump a meter. Which we clearly can. We from, obviously. As you've just, <laughs> you just seen. Yeah, like... Uh, can you, if you can jump a meter, can you get off the surface? Like, what's the smallest thing you could get off? That would be a really cool thing to think about. Yeah, so I guess how we calculate that, we'd have to think about how much energy you put into your jump. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, versus so. the binding gravitational energy that's holding you down. You want yeah. to balance those two things. Yeah. So I guess you could work, you could work out the energy you have on Earth, because we know, we're obviously the Earth, we know what gravity mm -hmm. is on the Earth, so you could work out what sort of kinetic energy you could give yourself 
Right. If you are on Earth, and then assume that you have the same amount of energy at least available mm -hmm. on the surface of a planet um, that's a lot smaller, and then from comparing it to what I would say, it's, you assume it's the same density as the Earth, which yeah, we know it's probably it's not. It's not that. I mean, it's it might vary by factor. To the Earth's about five and a half grams per centimeter cubed. And the Isn't that like the iron like is really high, so the iron content is what brings it up, right? Yeah, really yeah. So if you took that out, uh, you look at the icy objects like uh, Iapetus and Ceres in the solar system, they get down to about maybe half that, maybe a third that. So um, it's it's probably okay for a ballparking to say yeah. that it's a ball of rock similar to the Earth. Yeah, okay. I don't think you're going to too far wrong there. Potential energy, and I think I remember that equation. We used to do that even at high school, right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? It was. Um, NGH, right? NGH, that was the, yeah, that was the, right. but only that's only true if you're on the nearer surface of the, right. of the object, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is exactly. true because we're taking yeah. Earth on the surface of the Earth and we're using that to calculate how much energy we can put into our jobs. Yeah. So it's fair to use NGH, um, and then on the other side, we want to balance that with the amount of binding gravitational energy that an object has. That's a little bit tricky. You probably wouldn't yeah. have learned that at high school. Maybe I think maybe by the time you were like. You're 16, maybe you might have learned. Maybe in the UK. In the UK? Maybe in the UK, maybe we, in the UK we learned that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we learned that. But it's also the gravitational constant, the mass of the body you are trapped, you're stood on, mm -hmm. the mass of you, and then yeah. the radius of the body that you stood on. It's all divided by the radius, right? So, so yeah, I, uh, I wrote these down, and um, this is what I, I found. Um, and you can see that <laughs> when you do that, you find about two and a half kilometers in radius, which Whoa, is that's... pretty small. <laughs> That's tiny. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty small. Think about it, like a human's pretty small, but the fact that you could jump to escape a, an object is like, I mean, it would have to be a small object, right? Like, yeah. Um, but I mean, two and a half K, like, that's well beyond some of like the limits we were just talking about in terms of like could hold on to atmosphere. And like, I don't yeah. even think it would be hydrostatic equilibrium either, right? Oh, absolutely not. No, no, you're way, way, I mean, the, the objects which have hydrostatic equilibrium are like thousands of kilometers, yeah. like that. I mean, that's almost like a sixth the size of the Earth. So you're, you're certainly way, way smaller on that limit. It's probably going to be a potato shaped. Oh, object, and unfortunately a bit different to what Mario was running on. I was going to say, that really changes Super Mario Galaxy, doesn't it? If he's running on a little potato object, like, yeah, instead of like yeah. circles. To be fair, some of those planets were hollow as well, so... Ah, you yeah. know, that, that actually would... You could get them much bigger then. Yeah, that's true. Right? And you could keep the... So you can have something that's large, but still had a very low surface gravity, and you could jump off it because it's yeah. hollowed out in the centre. Although just, the thing would probably be very fragile. It would want to... It would yeah, want to collapse, collapse in on itself. Yeah. That's true. Especially if some human came along and jumped off it, stomped it, you an opposite force of reaction. And the amount of force we were doing, we oh. were totally destroyed. I mean, that. downstairs <laughs> would have hit that jump, let's be honest. This building almost went down. <laughs> <laughs> this 50 year old building is made of concrete. So, what would, the, what would the surface gravity be on a planet or a world that you are capable of jumping off? How low would it yeah, be? Yeah, I'm wondering that. So, the thought I just had when we were talking about Mario was. What is the ratio of like the size of Mario to the planet that he's moving around on? Mm -hmm. And then could we use that to like calculate the ratio of what then we would be to that size of planet, like given like average human height? Yeah. And then let's work out the gravity. Yeah. So we could just maybe take a screenshot of something and see and see his size. Yeah. All right. <laughs> cool. What do you want? To, I'll tell you what. Like, okay. Why don't you like grab the camera? Okay. So here's a video I got of Mario. Right. Is that really what my hair looks like from the back? So if we try and measure his height compared to like the diameter of the planet he's running around on, right? Then we should be able to do the same thing for us mm. and then the ratio of the two get like the size of a planet. Just scale it up. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we're seeing Mario from an angle here, but this was the only shot that I could get where the whole planet was in. So we have to take into account projection of it. Right? Okay. So, I mean, maybe he's like three centimeters tall. Right on my screen. He'd say he's four, but yeah, it's, he's, he's three. He's three. He's Three's lying. a good number. <laughs> and then if we look at sort of the radius of this planet and go to the widest point, then maybe you'd say the radius is about twenty centimeters for a nice round number. Okay. Twenty centimeters. Yeah. So if we do and calculate, like if we are say on average like two meters tall, I'm not two meters tall. She's so tiny. <laughs> to an astronomer's all of magnitude, we would accept that. It's totally fine, yeah. it's totally fine. So if we work out that, so so he's three centimeters and his planet is 20 centimeters across. Okay, right, well, let's do it this way. 20 centimeters is right there. Yeah, it's three, that factor times by his height. Yeah, and then we're about two meters tall, so a planet would be about 
13 meters across oh my gosh. in the same scale. So that's so much smaller than our two and a half kilometers. House, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Can you okay. imagine running around on a house and it having enough gravity to keep you there? Yeah, it would have to be a very dense house, right? You want like a uranium <laughs> house. A <laughs> neutron like star house. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really cool. Actually, that would probably work. Right, yeah. let's go work out the gravity now. So okay. We can come back to the put it on the desk. A few moments later. So what are we doing here? So we have to work out the surface gravity of our 13 meter <laughs> planet <laughs> that we know is not a planet. That's its radius. Yes, it's radius. Okay. Yeah. So its radius is 13 centimeters, so it's actually going to be like 26. All right. So squats, if we yeah. know the radius, we can calculate um, we can calculate surface gravity by yeah. using g m over r squared. That is the formula yeah. for surface gravity of an object. Yeah. That's so, just Newtonian physics. Yeah, but we don't really know the mass of it. But if we divide by like volume, we can get it in terms of like the the density, which we just talked about, like yeah. density of Earth and density of whatever. So you said that most like small bodies are like about. Uh, two grams, maybe? Two grams per cubed. Yeah. Okay, so that's what, like 2,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Yeah, good unit conversion. conversion. Mm -hmm. Unit conversions are the bane of undergraduates. I'm sorry yeah. that I'm making you do that. <laughs> and yeah. we have our R of 30 meters, so if we calculate G, which would be like 4, 5 over 3 G rho, which is your density, yeah. R, we get 7.26 times 10 to the minus 6 meters per second. Do so you see that in your head? No. <laughs> <laughs> I may have calculated I don't think I can do that earlier. Okay. okay. <laughs> Impressive. Editing Becky, she's clever. <laughs> so, so it's a hundred thousand times less, or a yeah. million times less. Than Something like that. About yeah. a million times about, less. Yeah, because yeah, Earth is like ten meters per second, right? Yeah. So it's, it's about yeah, it's about a million times. Wow. Less. So uh, this is the so, so even a snail would probably struggle to stay on the surface. <laughs> yeah. So this is the other thing. You can also work out the escape velocity, right? Okay. So the escape velocity is dependent on this um, your acceleration due to gravity, the strong mm. gravity is on the surface, and dependent on the radius of your planet, which we which we know is 13 meters. And you no, get I like, would not like this, not like no. this kind of definition we're using. I'm happy. It's the planet. So then you get your escape velocity of about 0 0.01 meters a second. Okay, so a centimeter per second. A centimeter per second. That's really... Like, I can move this pen yeah. a centimeter a second. Yeah, that's pretty terrible. That, that is literally the speed of like a toy toy or a snail, right? Yeah. That's some, so... Oh, now I have a vision of like... a. Mario the tortoise. <laughs> he's, just, he's just slowly trying to move, and just that slight movement is enough to set him off into all the Oh my gosh. I am so glad that that subscriber asked this question yeah. because it led us to this whole yeah. discussion. And this so we should be impressed when Mario is jumping off. It's yeah. not an impressive feat because no. a toy tortoise can do it. A basically. toy tortoise can do it. Yeah, so, Mario. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's he trying to show you off need for? to do more to impress us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, Ashley, this is a video out. <laughs> I'm still going to play the game though. Yeah. <laughs> and editing Becky will make us look good. That's the long running joke on my channel about editing Becky. She's very different from filming Becky because she gets a lot more aggro because she really doesn't like editing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do that. All right. And then the amount of. I did do that. <laughs> We've just done that, so that's happened. Here's what I made earlier. That's now canonical. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but if you're okay with just putting your, you know, your astronaut suit on, then this isn't. I'm okay with putting problem. my astronaut suit on. I don't have an okay, astronaut suit, but I'm okay with doing that. Yeah. <laughs>